compassion cuts across all boundaries and divisions. <clears throat> it's interesting. In John's gospel, he puts that very, very powerfully into the foot washing at the Last Supper. That's a very significant text, more significant than we often realize. Because <clears throat> first of all, you know, when, when you go to Mass on Holy Thursday, as a Roman Catholic, we're celebrating the institution of the Eucharist, but notice the Gospel doesn't give you the institution of the Eucharist. You get it in St. Paul, but what you get in the Gospel is you get the foot washing in John's Gospel. And in place of the bread and wine, you have the basin and the towel. Now, what is that? <clears throat> okay, a little bit of background, okay. You know, it, there isn't just one Eucharistic theology in Scripture. There are Eucharistic theologies. And John is very different than the Synoptics. See, this, in the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they link the last, the, 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 um, the institution of the Eucharist very strongly to the Last Supper. And um, Jesus takes bread and wine and consecrates it and so on. And, and, and Roman Catholics, we've actually picked up both. We link our, our, our Eucharist in very strongly to the sacrifice. We call it the sacrifice of the Mass and so on. That's the Last Supper motif. But in John's Gospel, you don't have that. John links the Eucharist to the feeding of the manna, the bread, the daily feeding in the desert, which incidentally, Roman Catholics, that's where we get the Roman Catholic practice of daily Eucharist from. We get it from John's Gospel, not from the Synoptics. See, in John's Gospel, the idea is the Eucharist is the bread from heaven, the manna you need to eat every day. Scholars suspect that John's community had Eucharist every day, and the other communities didn't have Eucharist every day. You know, and you know, so already in the New Testament, you have different theology of the Eucharist, different wordings for it, and so on. Um, now, John's Gospel was written really late, about the year 90 to 100, and John had already seen 70 years of church life. And 70 years of church life then are like 70 years of church life now. They fought about everything, okay? And especially they fought about the Eucharist. How often should it be celebrated? When should it be celebrated? Who should preside? And so on. So when John gets to the Eucharist, okay, instead of having the bread and wine, he brings out the basin and the towel. It's a powerful gesture. They say, at the supper, and John words this very carefully, he says, Jesus, knowing that he had come from God and that he was going back to God and that therefore all things were possible for him, got up and began to wash his disciples' feet against their objections. Now, what is the meaning of this gesture? Well, like everything else in John's Gospel, it has various levels of meaning. And we more easily get the first one, which is a valid meaning. So what we've, what we've taken off of there in our iconography, our homiletics, and so on, our hymnus, our, and so on, is very much the motif of humility. See, the Master washes the disciples' feet. And that's an important motif. That's level one in John's Gospel. The Master washed the disciples' feet. What is it? John Shea, the Chicago theologian, has written a wonderful poem on this. And he says, he said, at, at the Last Supper, he says, um, he says, Jesus took the mantle of privilege and reversed it into the apron of service. So that's, that's the first gesture. It's a wonderful gesture of humility, but the context gives you something else. It's in the context of all the divisions, especially within the Eucharist. So it's a gesture of humility, but it's a particular kind of gesture of humility. It's this. Um, you know, there's humility that's clean and humility that's not clean. So I'll give you an example. Clean humility. Imagine it's Christmas Day, okay? And before you eat your Christmas dinner, you go down and you help serve a meal at the food bank and you help serve some homeless people, that's a wonderful gesture. That's washing somebody's feet. But you know something? It's not that hard to do. And you know something else? You'll feel pretty good about doing it. <laughs> when you're taking your shower, you'll feel good. You've done something good, and it is something good. But this humility, that's different. Okay. How? Okay. I want to risk something here. If I ask you this, well, what's the most divisive moral issue in this country today. It's not even abortion. It's not even a question, okay? It divides not the sincere from the insincere, it divides the sincere from the sincere, you know? Now, you know what John would do if he came back today 
given this text, and thing like that. Why don't we go with abortion? And so let's do this. Let's bring out some basin and towels and let that pro-life wash pro-choice's feet. And then let pro-choice wash pro-life's feet. Then we'll have Donald Trump wash Hillary's feet. <laughs> and we'll have Hillary wash Donald Trump's feet. And we'll have some Democrats washing some Republican feet. The Republicans wash Democrats' feet. We'll have some Christians wash some Muslim feet, as the Pope did. He said, then we have some chance of celebrating Eucharist. We have some chance of having communion, you know. You know, I was very lucky twice in my life to have had Raymond Brown, the great scripture scholar, as my professor. And he wasn't just a great scripture scholar, he was a great priest and a great Christian. And Raymond Brown said, you know, said, I wonder, he said, how different the history of the Eucharist would be in ecclesiology if instead of picking the bread and the wine, the church has chosen the basin and the towel. But he also said this. He said, when you're young, you should be causey. You know, when you're young, you need placards <laughs> to be out there protesting. So when you get to be about 70, he said, put your placards in your closet and bring out a basin and towel and start washing feet across lines, especially feet of people who are really different than you. Um, that's a powerful gesture. Now, there's another little motif in there I want to tease out. You know, they said, and I, and I actually didn't give you the text accurately, see. At the supper, Jesus, knowing he had come from God and he was going back to God, and that therefore all things were possible for him, got up from the table and took off his outer robe. Then he washed his disciples' feet, then he put it back on. That's not just a little teaser in scripture. He took off his outer robe. What's our outer robe? Okay. Well, I'll give you mine. They're not talking about clothing. We all have outer robes. I'm a white male, Canadian, Roman Catholic, missionary, priest, um, pro-life, all these things. They're my outer robe. And when I wear them, there's certain things I can't do. When I take them off, what's left? The same as with Jesus. He said, knowing that he had come from God and he was going back to God, and that therefore all things were possible for him. When we strip down to what's just left for our baptism, We've come from God and we're going back to God. And then you can wash the feet of anybody. But then notice, afterwards he put the clothes back on. <laughs> I often argue with Richard Rohr, because Richard Rohr is so against dualism, anti-dualism is Richard. Sometimes you need it. <laughs> notice you got to take it off sometimes, then you got to put it back on. You know? Um, but sometimes, see, John says, what's our inner identity? You know, you've come from God, you're going back to God. Everything is possible to you. Then we live without fear.